today is Friday, September 2nd. What to know about President Biden's rare primetime speech outlining his concerns for the future of the nation and why top Republican leaders are especially upset about it. Also, new national test results that show how the pandemic impacted kids' learning. Plus, what to expect if you're planning to travel this Labor Day weekend. What's perhaps the biggest, most anticipated change to Twitter in years? And historic ticket prices. It could now cost you an average American's yearly salary to see one of Serena Williams' final matches. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. President Biden gave a rare primetime speech to talk about what he sees as being one of the biggest threats to the nation, his predecessor. And already some Republicans are demanding an apology. Biden said former President Trump and his supporters are an extremist threat to the nation and that, quote, equality and democracy are under assault. He mentioned the people who are still denying the results of the 2020 election, the January 6 riots and more recent threats against FBI agents. And he said, quote, you can't love your country only when you win politically. Even though former President Trump is not in office anymore and hasn't officially announced whether he's going to run again, he's given plenty of hints. Yesterday, Trump told a radio show host if he were to become president again, he would issue pardons to January 6 rioters who've been convicted. And earlier this week, he posted online about overturning the 2020 election results and holding a new presidential election. But President Biden says most Americans, even most Republicans, don't agree with Trump on those issues. Still, many Republicans were quick to condemn President Biden for his speech, saying he's going against his campaign promise to unite the country. The Republican National Committee called Biden the divider in chief and House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy demanded the president apologize to Trump voters. And he made a pitch for Republicans to take control of Congress this November. Former President Trump also responded on his social media platform, Truth Social, calling the speech awkward and angry. He said Biden, quote, must be insane or suffering from late stage dementia. This weekend, the former president is also planning a rally in the same battleground state Biden gave his speech, Pennsylvania. So stay tuned. The test scores are in, and they show just how much the pandemic has impacted kids' learning in the U.S. The National Assessment of Educational Progress, or NAEP, released the first report comparing student performance from just before the pandemic to two years later. And in both reading and math, scores dropped significantly. The test results are just from nine-year-olds from across the country, but many feel it's reflective of how kids are doing at all levels. In reading, scores dropped to the lowest they have in 30 years. While in math, it was even worse. Test scores fell for the first time in the 50 years since NAEP started tracking the data. So essentially, all this means is that kids, mainly in fourth grade, are struggling with simple reading and comprehension, as well as having issues with early problem solving and other math skills. And the decline in learning affected kids of nearly all races and income levels. But it also showed that kids who are already struggling lost even more ground. The top-performing students only dropped a few points in both reading and math, while those at the bottom saw double-digit declines in both. An expert on educational testing told the New York Times he estimates that for every point lost on the exam, it's equal to about three weeks of learning loss. As for how they got the results, the tests were given to the same age group from January to March in 2020, and then again in 2022. More test scores are set to be released in the coming months. Two large wildfires are growing in Southern California, where a record-breaking heat wave is making it especially hard on firefighters. The L.A. area is under an excessive heat warning, with some areas hitting 110 degrees or higher. That's also where the Route Fire started earlier this week near the Castaic Lake. At least seven firefighters had to be taken to the hospital yesterday for heat-related injuries. Thankfully, all of them have been released. But there are concerns more will be impacted, since the weather isn't cooling down anytime soon. The cause of the fire is still being investigated. The other large fire in California is burning just east of San Diego. It's burned through at least four buildings and forced hundreds of people to evacuate. Firefighters say there have been several close calls, but so far no one has been reported hurt. This is all happening during one of the hottest stretches of the year so far in California. Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency due to the intense heat and is asking everyone to try to cut back on their energy use during peak hours in the hopes of avoiding rolling blackouts. Labor Day weekend is here, the unofficial end of summer, and perhaps a chance to squeeze in one last summer vacation. AAA expects Labor Day travel to be busier this year than last. 
The insurance agency says domestic bookings for things like flights, cars, and hotels are up 22 percent from 2021. Travel website Hopper says over 12 and a half million passengers will fly from U.S. airports during the long weekend, despite a rough summer for air travel. So should you be prepared for this summer's travel troubles to continue? The U.S. Transportation Department says it's doing what it can to make sure that doesn't happen. It rolled out a new website yesterday specifically for air travelers. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says the goal is to help passengers whose flights are delayed or canceled. The website outlines what travelers are legally entitled to when an airline changes their plans, like which airlines will rebook you for no additional cost. It also offers information like which airlines offer hotel accommodations and meal vouchers. Of course, it's also important to note the real reason we have off work and school for Labor Day. It's a federal holiday that pays tribute to the contributions and achievements of American workers. All right, we have more news for you still ahead. But first, a quick break for our sponsor. You almost never hear great business leaders say they did everything on their own. And there's a reason for that. Great businesses have great teams. And to build a great team, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Indeed lets you find great talent faster through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. I love when a platform makes things easy by providing everything you need in one place. Like Indeed assessments help take the stress out of the interview process. Your candidates get to prove themselves before you even interview them. So start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. The new updated COVID-19 booster shots have cleared their final hurdle. As expected, the CDC director signed off on the reformulated shots from both Pfizer and Moderna after advisors gave the okay in a 13 to 1 vote. And since the FDA already authorized the shots earlier this week, that means the booster shots could be on the market in a matter of days. Remember, these new shots help protect against the Omicron subvariants that are most widespread in the U.S. right now, as well as the original strain of the virus. It's recommended for everyone 12 and older, no matter what your health looks like. The only real stipulation on this new booster is that you wait at least two months since your last COVID shot before getting it. Next up, Pfizer is planning to ask the FDA to authorize its new boosters for 5 to 11-year-olds next month. Now to an unexpected benefit from the pandemic. Reforms that made telehealth appointments more available could really be helping people addicted to opioids. Multiple federal agencies, including the CDC, put out a new study this week. And in it, researchers compared two groups of Medicare patients who were suffering from opioid use disorder, also known as OUD. One group was followed before the pandemic started, the other all the way up until February of 2021. Well, they found the group they followed during the pandemic had more access to get telehealth services for OUD. And those who did were more likely to get medications to treat it and less likely to overdose. One of the research analysts says this study suggests that telehealth could address common barriers that keep people from seeking help, like they might be less worried about stigma. Still, the study noted there are some issues that needed to be addressed. For example, people who are Black or who live in the South were less likely to have access to telehealth services. Still, researchers are now advocating for telehealth services to continue permanently, even after the public health emergency for COVID-19 expires. Twitter is testing a new feature that many users say is long overdue, the ability to edit your tweets. The edited tweet will have a label and timestamp so other users know it's been modified. And during this testing phase, Twitter says tweets can only be edited a few times within 30 minutes after they're posted. Readers who tap the label will be able to see older versions of the tweet as well. The social media platform says it wants to keep a public record of what was originally said while still giving people the chance to do things like fix typos, add missed tags, and more. Twitter is testing this feature among a small group for now, but says subscribers of their paid premium version of the app called Twitter Blue will also get access later this month. Then the company says it will eventually give everyone the option to edit tweets. It just hasn't said when that will happen. All eyes will be on tennis legend Serena Williams tonight as she's set to play in the third round singles match at the U.S. Open in New York. 
The sports superstar is regarded as the greatest tennis player of all time and has suggested this will be her final tournament. That has made for some historically high ticket prices. Following Williams' thrilling victory against number two seed Annette Contivate Wednesday night, the cost of a ticket to tonight's match went through the roof. TMZ reported the cheapest tickets were originally $160, but skyrocketed to $450 after Williams' last win. And on StubHub, some of the best seats to see the 23-time Grand Slam champ are selling for more than $48,000. Tonight could be the last chance to see Serena play in a major tournament, since she and her sister Venus lost in the first round of doubles at the U.S. Open last night. Well, that's it for the main news today. So now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel-good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, a quick break for our sponsor. Before you book any brunch, you pour over lists and lists of reviews, right? So why not do the same when you're booking a doctor's appointment? With ZocDoc, you can see real verified patient reviews to help find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood. After all, finding the right doctor is just as, if not more, important than finding the right plate of eggs. Benedict. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun— when you're trying to straighten those teeth, fix an achy back, get that mold checked out, or anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. Go to ZocDoc.com, find the doctor that is right for you, and book an appointment, in person or remotely, that works for your schedule. Go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C, ZocDoc.com newsworthy. ZocDoc.com newsworthy. Now back to Feel Good Friday. Today's story comes from Minnetonka, Minnesota, where a retired barber and Navy veteran is picking up the clippers once again for a good cause. Tom Gorski closed his Minnesota barbershop more than 20 years ago, but at the age of 87, he's back in business. Gorski offers free haircuts to fellow residents in the garage of his senior living center. He makes himself available for 90 minutes once a week. And while the haircuts are free, he appreciates donations to a cause that's near and dear to his heart. It's called Arm in Arm in Africa, a Minnesota-based nonprofit that helps provide things like food, education, and health care for people in need in South Africa. Gorski and his wife have been with the organization to South Africa twice and still volunteer their time. Gorski says in the past five years, his free haircuts have generated $10,000. He says he plans to keep his makeshift salon open for business as long as his hands are steady, ensuring that every haircut brings a little help to those in need. We will be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode where we do our best to examine gun violence and gun laws without the politics and just the data. Then we're off for the Labor Day holiday on Monday, and we'll be back with your next news roundup on Tuesday. For now, thank you so much for listening and have a great weekend.